Uh, on to other pastures. Now, I'm going to ask a question. My, my lovely assistant, Sam, here has um, got a rather shocking device. Now, I'm going to ask a question. I want a show of hands now. Who has seen my friend Caleb before? Anybody? Oh, not many. You're going to love this then. <laughs> this is my friend Kayla. She is wonderful. She is an interactive, talking kids doll. The child can speak to her. She has a microphone so the doll can listen. It then takes the speech of that um, conversation, offloads it to a mobile app where she processes the voice into text, looks up a series of questions and answers in a database, and then speaks back to the child. So you can have an interactive conversation. Fantastic. Problem number one. Okay, she's got a microphone, a speaker, and she connects using Bluetooth. So I kid you not, you can connect this dolly to your phone and use it as a headset. You can actually make calls on the doll. <laughs> you, you do get some very weird looks, particularly when you're driving, but anyway. <laughs> now, first major security flaw, uh, the Bluetooth connection. Now, when you connect your phone to your hands-free car kit, you're asked to do what's called a numeric comparison. It's a feature of Bluetooth Blee. And uh, it allow you can simply can check that two digits, six digit numbers are the same. And that then creates a form of frequency hopping, which is very difficult to crack. Kayla, when she connects to the mobile phone, however, just connects. There is no concept of a pin. And that's a real problem. Remember microphone Bluetooth? So she's in your kid's bedroom. If I'm in Bluetooth range, street outside, next door flat, next door house, I can simply connect the doll and listen to the microphone or speak to the child through the dolly. She is a spy bug. I find that really distasteful. That was nuts. But what I really wanted to do, and when we bought her in the shop, there were some uh, labels on the side of the box that said she was child safe, internet friendly. And we're like, it intimated that she couldn't swear. And so the hacker in me and my colleagues is sitting there going, how the hell does that work? So if the child swears at the dolly, it tells her to go and speak to their parents, great. And we're like, in order to know that's a swear word, it must have a list of swear words. So we decompiled the Android app, um, extracted a SQLite database, and insta inside there found a database called ZBadWord with 1,536 really good swear words. <laughs> so we deleted them. <laughs> and now she swears like a docker. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all on our website if you want to go have some fun. It's not very suitable for work. Anyway, now... <laughs> As we always do, we reported this responsibly, ethically. We told the manufacturer. We told them they had problems. We even suggested ways they might fix it as well. Um, they dismissed what we'd done as a prank. Well, I laughed, but anyway. Um, and what they did instead is they, instead of actually fixing the bugs, they, they encrypted the SQLite database with SQL Cipher, which would usually be the right thing to do. But what they hadn't done is they hadn't re-keyed that encryption key on first install each time. So it meant that every single user of the app had exactly the same static encryption key. So in order to make her swear again, we just need to decompile it, grab the key, resubmit, bang, swears all over again. Crazy, right? <laughs> that was fun. And um, oh, just for uh, giggles, um, we often find smart product manufacturers who fail to handle, handle cybersecurity issues well often go to the wall. And that is um, my friend Kayla's UK website. And it was amusingly, and in a very old school fashion, defaced a few weeks ago. It's like, the company doesn't exist anymore. No one seems to know where they've gone. What a shame, hey? But that was a long time ago. What's happened since? Well. In the EU, um, in NISA, the European Security Agency, they've made some good progress towards some certification frameworks that smart product manufacturers can follow. There's a great one out there. If you've got a smart product, um, Etsy 303645 is really good. Um, that regulation's due. We've got the EU Cybersecurity Act on its way. Um, in the UK, we have the Product Security Telecommunications Infrastructure Bill, which contains uh, mandatory basic requirements for smart product security to protect our consumers. I, I don't know when it's going to get to law. It's at the second reading was just gone. But we do have laws in California, Senate Bill 327, which made reasonable security mandatory for smart products. And what I kind of liked about it was that uh, the senator who introduced the bill referenced our work on my friend Kayla, and that was the inspiration for doing it. Get in. Unfortunately, there's been no enforcement action since. Great. Got laws. No one's using them. Fantastic. I don't know. Um, there were a couple of fun things that happened. After uh, we published the work in My Friend Kayla, we did some work with the Norwegian Consumers Council. And working with them and a uh, German lawyer, 
we've realised that Kayla violated some uh, German anti-spying laws from 1947. And she was banned by the German telecommunications regulator overnight. It actually became illegal to own the doll. You would get a 5,000 euro fine just for owning this dolly, which made giving talks in Germany quite difficult. But that's another story. Anyway, did anyone learn? Did anyone learn through this? We have genuinely seen some good improvements to smart product security. Uh, Google's, um, Google's Nest, the Hive product, they're good smart thermostats. There are some other good smart products out there, but we st keep seeing problems. I'm going to bring one right up to date. This was at Christmas. Does everyone remember the little Fisher Price tow along phones? Yeah, everyone had one? Yeah, I did. Yeah. A little wooden one. They've actually, believe it or not, relaunched it and made it as a smart telephone. You can pair it to your phone and genuinely make phone calls on the little Fisher Price um, telephone. Brilliant. You can even dial the numbers using the little tile. I love it. But there's no security on the Bluetooth connection, just like Kayla seven years ago, which means exactly the same way someone can pass your house, connect to the little Fisher Price phone, and bug you. Too many of manufacturers aren't learning. <laughs> 